and get ready for episode six of the Downtown Podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk about why ROC is way better than ROI when it comes to raising money with the Vegas Tech Fund. We're going to meet Robin Farman Farmian from Singularity University, who's going to talk about the future of tech and medicine. And then, of course, Startup Weekend's right around the corner. So all that and more right now on episode six of the Downtown Podcast. Four, Five, four, three, three two, two, one. You gotta wait like three seconds now. <laughs> All right, welcome to episode six. We appreciate everybody coming out to another episode of the Downtown Podcast. Uh, we want to start by the most generous sponsor we've had yet, which is Alice Receptionist. Give a hand. As you can see. <laughs> see we upgraded for some of the cheap beer. Uh, but let me talk a little bit, Alice Receptionist. It's a company that we're considering partnering with, with Ticket Cake. This is a product that replaces employees. So yeah. get rid of them and replace them <laughs> with Alice Receptionist kiosks. So these are these are like kiosks that you can actually like interact with. And that means you can have one person somewhere else in the world that can interact with many, many people, not waste their time. It's great for startups. And uh, for us, I think it's going to be great for checking people in at events. And I think this is a company that everybody needs to look at seriously if they're having kind of those like questions of how to balance their budgets with employees. So uh, check out AliceReceptionist.com and thanks again for the beer. We appreciate it, Mike. Thank you. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Anyways, let's dive into the news. Uh, so you guys changed your name at the Chamber of Blank Commerce. <laughs> yes, we are now the Las Vegas Metro Chamber of Commerce, and it's it's cool. It kind of fits into the original mission. The chamber was founded over 100 years ago, and it was the Greater Las, Val Las Vegas Valley Chamber of Commerce. And really, in the last year, we were now opening an office. We have an office in Innovation. We're opening an office downtown. We've got the office in North Las Vegas. We work with so many different people. We cover the entire valley, and we wanted a name that was more encompassing of that. So announced the Las Vegas Metro Chamber of Commerce, uh, and it's got a whole fancy new logo and everything, and yeah, really like excited it. about it. Yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. It's great, man. You got a great logo designer. Oh. I heard you talking about him earlier. Ben Myrie, best designer. <laughs> I love the guy. All right, so let's talk I about Melissa. What's this Jumpstart Vegas initiative? So Jumpstart, Jumpstart Vegas initiative is a really cool program that we've put together. And we it's an entrepreneur-led initiative. So we have about 10 entrepreneurs sitting on our panel, really helping us figure out what are the gaps in the ecosystem here for startup entrepreneurs, and how can we as a community help to fill them. And that's everything from mentorship to connecting them to resources like legal services and accounting uh, to helping to make them more present with our businesses. I mean, we're the third largest chamber in the country. We want to make our businesses early adopters and early users of the startups here. That's such a great way to support them. So we're going through a whole bunch of things. Uh, we're going to have a lot more initiatives uh, coming out that we'll be talking about. One of the first big thing we're doing is Demo Vegas, uh, which will be during CES on January 8th. We're busing people from CES and from Blog World down to Innovation Center. We're gonna have a few pitches from some awesome Vegas tech companies. We're gonna have 20 more Vegas tech companies around the uh, Innovation Center. We're gonna have an open bar, which I was just told <laughs> is the essential ingredient to getting media down there, is. <laughs> which is why Joe is here today, because we have beer. Open bar and the truth. <laughs> we will have both Mostly of those. the truth. Yeah. We, the truth is Vegas tech is awesome, and there's an open bar, so everyone will yeah, be there. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Go Why would some established business here <clears throat> want to invest in a startup? Invest in a startup? I don't, I don't know. Or support one. Why, why do they care? They care because the success, first off, some of these uh, startups have great solutions that fill needs within companies that currently exist. Secondly, by being an early adopter for startups, they're supporting the startup ecosystem. If we can create some more successes, they could turn into a company like a Zappos or a Google or a Facebook or anything of any moderate success that's new jobs, that's economic stimulation, and it's going to help drive new business to the community. So businesses being early adopters and supporters of startup is vital for a good ecosystem. And if you look at other startup ecosystems that have been successful, they really have businesses and community members that are early adopters. So we're trying to we're trying to change that culture here within business. Have, have you seen the chamber change over the years? I mean, did you have any recollection of like what they were like, you know, since you've been here for a while? The chamber. Has it, has it, have chamber. you seen an evolution? God, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I don't or really you follow the chamber. Yeah. You know, you go and you hand out cards and you uh, shake hands and you meet everybody. I, mean, I, that's, I don't know much about the chamber. <laughs> okay. He's on the investigative side. He's trying to, you know, uncover yeah. things. All right, so talk to us about ROC versus ROI. So you've seen the community down here changing. You hear people talking about return on community instead of return on investment. What's yeah. your opinion about how you that know, direction's uh, when, going? Um, a couple of years ago when Tony told me he was going to do, uh, you know, the whole downtown city hall thing and try to make this community, I poo-pooed him and I said, yeah, you're, you know, you're full of it. You're, you're just some rich kid who's going to come here and make millions. And he said, no, no, I want to make a nice uh, community here. <clears throat> and the goal, um, he always said, was a return on community, which, you know, if you've lived in Vegas long enough, doesn't quite make sense. Nobody right. here tries to make a nice community. Especially they want, at that time. They <laughs> want to make milli millions and get the hell out of here. But... Um, it seems to be the truth. In fact, uh, uh, just last week he said, so now do you believe me? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He, 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 the truth is, you know, and I've, I've talked to people who work with him. I was talking to somebody at the Vegas Tech Fund, who's, which is one of, uh, Tony says on the board, I asked them if they could um, invest in a company that would triple their profits in six months, but they had nothing to do with Las Vegas, would they do it? And they, they said emphatically, no, they wouldn't do it. They want somebody who's going to <clears throat> not only um, become a good business, but when they become a good business, they do something for Las Vegas, the community here. And um, that's what return on community means. And I, th I, th it's, I think it's a fine line, a difficult line to follow, to find a company that's going to create yeah. profits, right. return something to the investors, and also return something to the city. I, it's yeah. difficult. It's going to be And a, you're, getting, you're getting mugged less, right? Because I, I heard you got mugged a little while ago. I got mugged <laughs> three and a half years ago. That's true. <laughs> yes. I think I could now walk within, I, I've told people, within a quarter mile of the downtown Fremont area at night freely without fear of muggings. Okay. Well, you're not a girl. So Victory. Smaller. But, yes, yeah, true. I'm not a woman, so it's different. Okay, well, I would ask you another question. So, uh, what do you know about Code for America? So, from what I understand, we've got uh, Tony bringing in $1,600, or, or $160,000, and then they're matching it to, yeah. the state's matching it. At first, it to I thought it was so. some espionage thing, like code, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> start coding shit The code stuff. breakers? Yeah. But, um, it's, a, it's, it's really a, a government, it's something to help government here. And it's sort of like uh, there's a, a program already in the Clark County where a company came in and they, uh, they created an app where you can take a picture of a graffiti, you know, send it to the county, and they'll go and take care of the graffiti right away. Some company mm -hmm. will. It's kind of like that. They want to do that with the city. So a company's going to, a group of engineers just out of college are going to come here in February for a month, talk to the community, talk to the city try to figure out you know, what their needs are, and then develop applications to fill those needs. And, and they'll be on, in, on contract for a year. And at the end of a year's time, um, hopefully they'll have come up with some ways to m make government more efficient in, in various ways. For instance, in Boston, they created an adopt a, adopt a fire hydrant program. Okay. And it's an app where people adopt a fire hydrant, and when it snows heavily, oh, that's cool. people will go out and shovel out the <laughs> fire hydrant. Uh, yeah. Give it a hug, a noogie, whatever right. you need. <laughs> exactly. Decorate. Yes. Okay, that's cool. I, so, so, but it, so it is private. It is public sector, but it might help the private sector in the sense that just everything around here is going to get more technical, that we have more, more opportunities. Well, yeah. When, you know, I always think when people think about what's happening there, it's, it's bound to spur other people in, in the valley here who are technically minded or even who aren't but know somebody who can do the coding for them to think of ways that they could, you know, make money off of some application that nobody's ever thought of. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it because, uh, I mean, from what I understand, the other cities had some pretty intense technical challenges to get over, and those people did rise to the occasion before. So I think when they come down here, we'll give them a good problem to deal with, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Plenty of it, so. All right, so we've also been shouted out on a, uh, another podcast, which is much more popular than ours and much more funny, and it yeah. explores the dark side of the internet, but uh, we wanted to say thank you to them, so Showcane shouted us out. Have you watched their show, I heard? Yeah, yeah, I watched All day, every show. day. All day, every day. They're not that scary. I mean, they're a little scary, but not that. As scary as, like, 4chan yeah. or... You won't learn anything, that's, that's <laughs> no, for sure. No, but you will be entertained. It's purely yeah. entertaining. And, uh, they're really... <laughs> They're really funny guys. I highly, like the fact that they shouted out, us out was shout out to you guys. You're awesome. <laughs> shout out back. Appreciate it. <laughs> All 
All right, I think that's it for the news section. So thank you guys. I really appreciate you coming out, Joe. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
they believe they have cured some of the autoimmune diseases using stem cells. That's a huge breakthrough. Right. They're going into, I think, phase two trials now with that. Uh, then we'll step into neuromedicine and things like brain-computer interfaces. So having a robotic arm, if say you've lost your arm or you're an amputee, uh, having a robotic arm that's now controlled by a brain-computer interface. Being able to feed yourself again for the first time, maybe in your life or the first time in years. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because that would be your brain like sending electrical signal. They take it into the hardware and like make it actually like become your arm. Exactly. Oh, that's crazy. So, so do you have a copy of your um, genome on the internet? Like, is there a copy anywhere in some vault somewhere? Well, I have. I did do my twenty three and me. Okay, okay. That, yes. <laughs> that's right. That, that's right. Because you have uh, straight hair, right? Is yes. what they said that you were high likelihood of straight hair. Exactly. My twenty three and me results did come back and said <laughs> that I had a high likelihood of straight hair. Okay. Were they right on anything else, or is this still just a fifty fifty kind of technology? Or do you think it's getting there? We're, we're, develop, we're, we're really discovering more and more genes on a daily basis. So it's going to iterate. But um, it did come back saying I was at risk for type 2 diabetes. So I'm going to stay skinny. <laughs> oh, good. OK, so um, <laughs> what, what I'm getting, I got a segment piece. I need to get skinnier too, OK? OK, anyways, OK, guys, I'm on air right now. Give me a break. <laughs> Uh, so another thing you said is that you make a lot of food and you can read the labels on things and you can actually determine what these giant words are. So I thought maybe you could uh, read through that a little bit. This word in particular, this very bottom row there, I had no idea what's in my Starbucks trademark? drink. registered trademark? Well, let me explain that. No. Oh, yeah, that's your family. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, so, so tell me about some of those crazy things in that Starbucks drink. Uh, so coffee, uh, pectin. Pectin is a th uh, thickener. Natural flavor, sugar, milk. Melodextrin. These are all normal ingredients in most things. Normal to you. Melodextrin? Oh, that's just, I believe that's a preservative, but that one I would look up. Is this going to kill me or am I all right? Uh, no, it's probably going to kill you. You know, okay. eventually, maybe another hundred years. <laughs> all right. Gosh. You got to work on that. Yeah, you got to work on stopping that aging and getting sick thing. We're all depending on Singularity U to do that. Okay, so one more thing I want to talk to you about was uh, being picky about your investors. It's something else I thought might be interesting to our audience in particular. Um, a lot of people need money. They're, like, desperate for money. They're working on their ideas, and they don't have an opportunity to get it. So when it comes, they grab it. But you were telling me that's probably not a good idea, and you really need to have an investor that cares about you. So tell me where that came from and how important that really is. Absolutely. So your investor is really part of the team. And building your team and building your culture is a big part of success in a start any startup company. And you don't want to just take any kind of money from someone either who's going to be completely hands off because you're bringing them on also as an advisor and you're, you're help, they're going to help you with their connections and, and their area of expertise. But also you don't want someone who's going to micromanage you and tell you exactly how to do your company because then they may as well do, be doing it themselves. So someone yeah. who's going to be part of the team. And you've seen, you've seen a pattern with the successful companies that they have a good relationship with the investors. And... Absolutely. OK, because I mean, I, I, I can imagine that's a hard thing for a lot of people to pass on, but uh, they probably should. I mean, you know, I think that's pretty accurate and pretty hard to digest, but something entrepreneurs should think about. Um, so this is really cool. So you did a presentation, and you talked about the uh, human genome compiler, OK? Mm -hmm. So this is what you would consider something like, a, uh, like an Xcode or like an IDE that you would compile code with. But it actually takes genetic information. It breaks it into little snippets, and you can actually put them together. The compiler will take care of a lot of the weird things, like if you're mixing glow-in-the-dark genes with a frog or a tree or a cat, like the image that Gabriel put up. Um, so I got a chance to play with this. I oh. downloaded it. Um, this is actually kind of a little um, slide that they have on the website. This is the uh, genome compiler website. And I, I created a bacteria and named it after you. <laughs> OK? What does it do? Well, what it does, actually, can we go to the next slide? Uh, I don't know who has this slide things, but. Oh, yeah. OK, so anyway, so let me, let me tell you about my goal here was to create a virus that makes curly hair, because you know I thought maybe some people think that's a really cool thing. So I popped open this human genome compiler, and it was really cool. So I started with a, uh, I started with a, a, a E. coli. You know, you got to start somewhere. You got to have something that already works and that gets in there. And I, you know, I don't know a ton about biology, but it has the way a virus works is it's got these um, like little head part, and then it injects the DNA in there. So I actually was able to pull up the like all of the. This is all the genome for a um, a uh, E. coli bacteria, and it's inside the um, virus capsule. So I went through, and then I cleaned out as best I could the E. coli because I don't want you and everybody else who wants curly hair to get. Get E. coli. So I did my best to clean out the genes. I mean, some of this unknown stuff, like who knows what's in there. So you know, buyer beware if you guys are going to get this from me. <laughs> but uh, I would start selling I, it to bald men first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thought they'll buy anything. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, that's good. That's really funny. You got a good humor bone. Um, so I cleaned it out, and then I went in and uh, I started playing with like glowing jeans. They had uh, a whole section down here in these vectors where you can take different genetic parts and like pop it in inside this uh, virus. So I ended up finding a um, a gene that was for curly hair. It's called BBA underscore K one one five zero two zero. Just so you guys know. I know, know it well. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you do. Yeah, <laughs> that was Harvard classes. Um, so yeah, we put so I put it together and uh, you go to the next slide. The um, oh, can you go back to actually? I don't know if we have the. Um, oh, we're missing it. Anyways, I had a cool, I had a cool like Starbucks logo inside of a uh, inside. Oh yeah, that's what I was, yeah yeah. Princess <laughs> Starbucks hair. So this is this is it. This has got your uh, Starbucks hair <laughs> jeans. There we go. And this is what it looks like. It's gonna hop on the cell. I learned that this thing's called the phospholipid bilayer. It's the outside of the cell, and it's just gonna inject this DNA right inside. It's gonna hijack all the necessary things to make curly hair and eventually I think your immune system is going to take it back over so you will go back to straight hair. It's a temporary thing. And um, when the funny thing is when you play with this genome compiler you can actually drag it right up to the cart and just order some. Exactly. So, yeah, and I know there's some real scientists working on a pill for curly hair but I'm going to do half price. Oh, thank you. I've got a whole like business model around it. So that's it. I just want to say thank you for inspiring me to play around with this. I do. We had a conversation about how the next generation of kids might think this way like this might be their Legos like they might not see life as something like we do they might see it as like these pieces that can be put together for different business models and different purposes and um, it was you and Gabe who really started like got me thinking on a different level so um, I appreciate it I think you helped out the community a lot and it was really nice of you to come out and visit us and best of luck with Singularity U. Thank you. Okay thanks guys appreciate you. So congrats if you're watching this, you apparently survived the apocalypse. Since we'll be taking the next week off to enjoy the holiday season, here's some events to tide you over in the coming weeks. First up, on Saturday, January 5th at 5 p.m. is the self Grow Mastermind series at UserLib. The panelists include award-winning author G. Brian Benson and former Miss Nevada Sandy Castle. They will be discussing on how you can become your true authentic self over the new year. So get your resolutions ready and definitely check it out. And if one of those resolutions is actually to be healthy, which you know most people are, then the Sunday Reset Project is for you. Move, stretch, meditate, act, and eat. Join others downtown to reset your mind and body. And this month it will actually be on January 6th at 7 a.m. For more information and to get your tickets, check out ResetProjectLV.com. And there's a lot more fun events for Vegas Tech with CES coming up. A must-attend event is actually Girls in Tech CES Mixer on Tuesday, January 8th, <laughs> January 8th at Lady Sylvia at 5.30 p.m. It's a great opportunity to mingle with a local and visiting Girls in Tech. Enjoy the happy hour from 5 to 8 p.m. And men, as always, are welcome. Don't be scared. <laughs> Following that on Wednesday the 9th at 6.30 p.m. at the historic 5th Street School is launch up number 8. This awesome event showcases various local startups, one of which will actually be the Downtown Podcast. Brad Feld, the co-founder of Techstars and the managing director of Foundry Group, will actually be guest speaking as well. The first 300 people to arrive will get a copy of his new book, Startup Communities, Building an Entrepreneurial Ecosystem in Your City. Be sure to sign up for this event on TicketCake.com. And for those of you with an entrepreneurial spirit and looking for a new project, we might have a solution for you. Here to talk more about that is Anthony with Startup Weekends. All right, thanks for that, Melissa. Appreciate how you came right back over here. It's like magic. It is like, it isn't like magic, it is magic. It's Christmas magic. It is Christmas magic. Um, so we have Anthony here. He's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, Startup Weekend. So if you just give us a quick rundown, what's going on, what to expect. Absolutely. 0411. Absolutely. Startup Weekend is taking place on January 4th through the 6th at the Innovation Center. Basically, any, anybody with ideas, uh, developers has come down, uh, team up together, and formulate an actual business. At the end of it, it's a three-day event, 54 hours. Uh, you get able to pitch your idea in front of investors, and that's the opportunity for you to hopefully have a great business here in Las Vegas. Yeah, you know, that last episode we had Jeff from LaunchKey on, and they started at uh, Startup Weekend. I mean, it's real big companies and funded companies are coming out of this. That's a good thing, right? That's a really, that's a really good thing, yeah. I think it's awesome for anybody who's into that stuff. So, so you get um, developers and designers and BD, right? Like, those are kind of people that you're looking for to sign up? Absolutely. Those that with talent, with, with if you're a designer, a developer, anybody with ideas, I don't care what age you are, you can be seven years old and come out. Please come out and uh, represent. Good. For the younger, the younger viewers, yeah. yeah. I think that'd be great. Anyone got kids? 
<laughs> Somebody's got kids, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, that's it. We're done with this podcast. We appreciate everybody yeah. coming out for episode happy six. Holidays. Anthony, yeah, happy uh, Merry Christmas. Glad you survived the apocalypse. Anthony, thank you. Thank you FaceTime about starting the weekend. We'll get a lot of people out there. Thank so. You. All right, Merry Christmas, guys. All of y'all just running lips, creeping on a come up clip. Vegas, yeah, we in this bitch. Tweet to your followers, remember like a flashback. Vegas tech, don't forget to spell it with the hashtag.